Hi, my name is Rodonna Hendry, and I'm from Arkansas, and I have wrote a book called Spiritual Forces of Evil in the Heavenly Realms. Well, today, in this book, I want to enlighten you of the gods, the spirits, and the principalities that have returned to the world. The pagan gods of ancient Israel have returned. America opened the doorways for them to come into our land in the 1960s. God tells us in Ephesians 6, 12, then our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers in the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Well, I feel that as a Christian that I have the responsibility to sound the alarm and to warn people. If I keep silent and you perish, then I'll be guilty of your blood. We are all on the same world, dealing with the same problems, and God commands us to love each other and have compassion to each other. We must stand for what's right and against what is not. We are to be the light in the darkness. We are to share the truth in love. I pray for your heart, ears, and eyes to be open to the truth. As you read this book, as I read, wrote it, I learned so much. Let's rebuke the devil and the demons in the name of Jesus from blocking you from receiving this revelation revealed in this book. Our wall has fallen away from the teachings of the true Jehovah God and has turned to other gods. And I will explain and show you in this book. Well, first you must understand that the ancient gods could not return if there had not been a falling away from the Christian faith and a biblical worldview. No single event or date can be pinpointed as the beginning of the falling away. It is a process. There were milestones, turning points, and moments of letting the gods in. The faith of the Western civilization comes from ancient Israel. The Bible consists of the writings of Israel, the Psalms of Israel, the Chronicles and History of Israel, the Prophecies of Israel, and the Gospel of Israel. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses speaks of a people departing from God and turning to other gods. Well, the first topic we're going to talk about is how did the gods get into Israel? It was not long after the Israelites settled in the promised land that they, became, they began turning away from God. The people turned from God and wanted an idol God to worship after God brought them out of Egypt. Moses was up in the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights getting the Ten Commandments. The people turned to Aaron after Moses was gone so long and asked him to build an idol cast in the shape of a calf. After creating the idol, they held a celebration in its honor. They feasted and drank with music and offered sacrifices on its altar. They opened the door for the gods to enter when they turned their backs on God. And this is in Exodus 32. The people were drawn away from the word of God, the laws of God, and the ways of God. Baal would use this same strategy on our nation. Okay, now we know how the gods got into Israel because they turned their back on God. Now, how did they get rid of the gods? That's the next section. Why did the gods leave ancient world of Israel? The gospel and the word of God crossed over into the pagan world. The crossing over would change the course of world history. The word of God was shared by his disciples and him, Jesus. And during this time, there was a big clash of spirits. The book of Acts records several of these big clashes. First is in the city of Philippi. A, a woman was possessed with the spirit of divination, and she was stalking Paul. And this is when Paul was in prison for casting out the spirit and the crowds just went crazy. There was a big uproar with them. His imprisonment ended when an earthquake shook the prison to its foundation. Another time was in the city of Ephesus. This is when the disciples were preaching the word of God and performing miracles of healing 
and they were casting out spirits that led to a dangerous confrontation. The idol makers. The idol makers were stirred up, and they got the people stirred up, saying the city's patriot goddess was being threatened by this new message of faith and hope that Jesus and his disciples were bringing. The truth was that the message was cutting into their profits if the people stopped buying their idols that they sold. Always follow the money. Another time, believers were imprisoned, and this was several times. They were crucified, burned, and sent into the arenas to be killed for entertainment. The rage of the pagan world was furious against the people. In the early years of the 4th century, the Roman emperor launched what would be known as the Great Persecution. The number of Christians arrested became so great that the common criminal had to be released from Roman prisons to make room. Christians would be commanded to offer sacrifices to these pagan gods. If they refused, they would be imprisoned or killed. But in the end, against all odds, the message of the gospel of God's love and forgiveness overcame the reign of the gods. People turned back to God and the spirits left. God tells us that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's in Second Chronicles 7-1. Now let's talk about how did these ancient gods return to us. Is we turned our backs on God and this gave them permission to return. Our actions opened the doorway to the pagan ways of life. We as a nation or civilization that once knew God, that was once delivered of these gods and spirits, have turned away from God. Our turning away from God opened the door for these ancient spirits to return. I will discuss in detail how we have turned away from God later on in the book. The next part says, Have you turned away from God? Have you turned away from God and His way of living by His Word? Have you turned from the truth of God? As you read this book or listen to me, be honest with yourself about how you live. Do you live for God or do you see your actions and lifestyle like the pagans? All, what, all you must do is ask for forgiveness and turn your life over to the one true God of heaven and earth. You are making that decision right now as you listen to this book. You will choose the one true God or the devil and his demons. Do not fool yourself. God's warning of turning away from him. A nation that is left empty and does not keep God inside will be reoccupied. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes in with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. And that is Matthew twelve forty three. In this book, I'm going to be talking about three evil gods, and they are the dark trinity, okay? They are Baal, Ishtar, and Molech. They have these many little gods under them that worship and do their evil work in the world, and we call them the devil and demons. I will go into the names later on in the book, but I want to teach you about the three major gods that is the dark trinity. The devil always imitates God. 
In Christianity, we have the Trinity of God, with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, these are Baal, Ishtar, and Moak, in the Dark Trinity. In this book, or this audio, I will show you examples of how these pagan spirits, or gods, are manifesting themselves in our world today. Demons and devils must work through a body. They could be working through you right now, or through me right now. But I pray that our eyes are open to what God we are serving. We cannot serve two gods. It is either good versus evil, light versus dark, or God versus the devil. Let's start with the first God. Baal is the king of the gods. He was the god of fertility, war, and the weather. He's the leader of all the spirits. He's the biggest enemy of the God of Israel. He's the chief god of the Canaanite people. The worship of Baal was prevalent in Canaanite. Baal is the king of the gods. He's called the god of fertility, war, and weather. He is the leader of all the spirits. He is the biggest enemy of God of Israel. He was the chief god of the Canaanite people. Baal's promises. Baal promised the Israelites fertility, fruitfulness, increase, gain and prosperity. Man's survival was dependent upon Baal's blessings. What he does to the ancient Israelites is what he is doing today in America. What is Baal's mission? His mission is to cause a nation that has known the true God to stop knowing him, to forget him, to forget even knowing anything about him. The goal is that they no longer remember or imagine what it's like to have known him. It takes one generation to not worship God to get them to forget him. Are you instructing your children and your grandchildren about God? Are you raising them in a godly home so that they know God is their Savior and friend? Are you choosing hell for your children by not allowing them to learn about the true God and to make up their minds. I feel that there are so many parents that will have their blood of their own children on their hands. I'm thankful that I had a God-fearing parents that taught me about a loving God that died for me. He made a way for me to have eternal life through shedding his blood for my sins. I pray you are against the evil mission of Baal, and you are teaching the next generation about God. So he's not forgotten. Baal's strategy today in America. Baal is using the same strategy on America as he used on Israel. He's separating the nation from the word of God, from the ways of God. It is most noticeable in the 1960s. In that decade, America removed prayer from its public school. It followed by banning of God's word from the instruction to the nation's children. The Bible had always been part of the instruction in the schools since the beginning, in starting at Massachusetts Bay. By removing prayer and instruction from the education of America's children, Baal was weakening the transmission of faith to the next generation. He could then separate the entire nation from prayer, from the word, and from faith. He could cause the world to separate from God. Baal's agenda was not limited to the school system. It would go after everything in America's culture. He went after the newspapers, the magazines. They would no longer publish and endorse Christian values. The entertainment world would no longer uphold biblical morality. The television stations would not promote prayer or present the ways of God in a positive light, but would war against them. The politicians spoke less about Christian values. 
the nation was going away from the ways of God. God had given Israel and America a safeguard against the gods and the ways of paganism by following the Ten Commandments. The very first one was that you shall have no other gods before me. The Ten Commandments and the law was the foundation of Western civilization. They were America's cornerstone of society. Our country was built upon the ways of God. The Ten Commandments would come under governmental judgment and be banished from the public square. In 1980, the Supreme Court ruled that it was no longer legal to display the Ten Commandments in public schools. Baal had won. The removal of prayer and the Word of God from the public view had allowed an opening for other things, spirits and gods, to fill the empty house of America. According to a parable, an empty house is a dangerous thing. America had emptied itself of God. It would not remain empty, though. Others would come. Okay, I'm going to stop this podcast and tell you what the next one's going to be. It's going to be about the cultural war that we are in. And the first God that I want to talk about is Baal on this next podcast. So make sure you find me and go to it.